Hey y'all, this is Dave, and today's big hairy idea is how do you bounce back from setbacks? So last night, 9.45, Ari Lev and I were sitting around watching as the Israeli lunar lander Bereshit made its final, final drop towards the moon. And about 25 kilometers up, it takes this amazing selfie with it, where you can see itself and you can see the moon in the background and it's so exciting and it hits the point of no return and it says everything looks good and it continues to go. But we're also, well, at the same time, we're watching the telemetry and the telemetry is telling us the speed of the vehicle, both sideways, both horizontally and vertically. And you see it's slowing down a lot going horizontally, but its speed is picking up dramatically going down. And you see its altitude, at the same time as its speed is going up, its altitude is going down very, very fast. And at a certain point, the word comes out that the main engine is just not working and you see it, it's just taken by gravity. And at that point, we know it is just going to smash into the moon and fall to a million pieces. And what was really amazing to me was watching this broadcast and watching the way everyone dealt with this. Now, before I get to that, let me give you a little bit of history on this. So a number of years ago, there was something that was announced called the Google Lunar X Prize. It was one of the X Prizes that was sponsored by Google with a $20 million prize for those who could get to the moon first. And a number of contestants came forward. Every single one of them, except one, was a private company trying to compete for this contest of getting first to the moon. One of them, the Israeli team was a nonprofit. And the Israeli nonprofit came at it with a perspective of, we need to use this opportunity to educate people about science, to actually make this an educational project. And for years around Israel, there's been space IL activities where people could go and could learn about the learn about space travel and kids could be learning about engineering and how to build things. And kids were welcome to go and watch launches, you know, test launches and look at all the development that was going on. And for years, there's been so much scientific education going on in this country about engineering and space travel around the space IL team and the building its lunar lander, lander buries sheets. And it's just been an incredible effort and we've learned so much from it. And it's the, and last night we learned so much too because we're sitting there and there's so much excitement that Israel is about to land on the moon. And for the record, Israel did land on the moon. We just landed on the moon a little too hard, a little too hard. But still, Israel, tiny little Israel, became only the fourth country ever to reach the moon. And afterwards, and so many people had worked and spent over $100 million that was privately funded for this. So many people worked for so many years to build this lander. And what was the response afterwards? First of all, what an amazing accomplishment. that Israel actually built the lander that got all the way to the moon. And two, okay, this is our first setback. But the problem with building a lunar lander is you really can't test the thing. And this thing had never flown before. And it didn't work. And so, okay. We've learned that, we've gotten feedback. How do we use this to go forward even more? How do we use this learning experience to make sure that iteration 2.0 or 3.0, because there's another iteration that went up in a test flight and SpaceX's rocket that was carrying it blew up and destroyed, destroyed that one. <clears throat> but the point being, we keep picking ourselves up and working on it and trying to make it better. And one of the most moving parts for me was at the very end, and the, the, the president's house here in Jerusalem, they started to sing, and it was joined around the country, Hatikva, the national anthem. Now, I grew up going to Hartford Whaler games. And when we were playing a Canadian team, they, they'd always start singing the, the U.S. national anthem and the Canadian national anthem. And all the national anthems I've ever heard are always about how strong we are, how powerful we are, how we fight, how we win, all of that. Israel's is completely different. Israel's is a song of hope. It's a song of dreams. It's a song of what can we hope to accomplish if we just keep dreaming and we keep moving forward. And wow, won't we be able to do amazing things? And I think that's really what allowed Israel to even attempt this tiny little country with this nonprofit competing in this field of all of these big companies, all of whom, of course, dropped out when the contest and <clears throat> the deadline passed. All the other teams dropped out. But Israel kept going because we had a bigger mission. We had a mission to inspire and to educate and to teach. And it's just so inspiring seeing all these leaders saying, okay, 
We didn't hit that and we are massively bummed. It would have been a huge celebration and we're going forward and we're learning from this, we're progressing from this, but our ultimate goals, our ultimate goals of inspiring, of educating, of lighting up an entire generation of people, that hasn't changed in the least due to the fact that Bury Sheet hit the moon a little bit harder than ideal. So I feel so incredibly proud of my country and everything that has been accomplished. And I love the attitude. And I was reflecting on this as well because you know, at, at the moment I was struggling with a couple of things that, wow, weren't going 100% in my business and how do I, I do that and feeling bad for myself. I'm like, wow, these people spent $100 million in years of their lives and they did crashed and burned on the moon and they're picking themselves up and reiterating so much more so can I pick myself up and make sure that the next steps that I'm making are even stronger, that I'm learning from everything I've, I've missed on and I'm going further and I'm going further and I'm going further. And I want to leave you with that question. What is an area in your life that has not turned out exactly as you envisioned that it would? And how are you able to take this as inspiration? Pick yourself up. Use the setback as feedback rather than it's not a failure. It's a learning experience. How are you able to take this thing in your life that might not have gone the way you wanted it to? Use it as feedback and use it to come back even stronger, even better the next time around. Take care.